Okay, I came out of university with a degree in marketing and a postgraduate degree in advertising. I worked for an advertising agency for three years. I was crap. I didn't like, I liked all the smart suits and all that sort of stuff, but very re quickly realized I was on the wrong side of the creative line or the uh, management line, as it were. So I went, oh dear, what am I going to do now? Um, <laughs> And I ended up working for a company that did events. You could go clay pigeon shooting, you could ride jet skis, you could do an assault course, you know, we'd put it on for you. Your staff would come out and have a play. Uh, and then they'd have a big team building day, basically, and then they would go home. So I used to make events for people. Easy. Um, but this company also had a little TV show that they made for children. Racing jet skis, motorbikes, hovercraft, and all that sort of stuff with an assault course or two in there. So... I helped them make it as an event person, then gradually I came on to say, well, we need more content, we need different games, blah, 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 blah. I started drawing games, making games for people, and that was it. So it was all races and stuff then. What really fired me up, I watching, was watching American Gladiators, and I went, hell, fire, I could make that. Yeah, I, that looks fun, I was swinging about up there, doing all that sort of stuff. So just then ITV started to make it, and I was in the roster as one of the guys, and it just drew me magnetically towards it. It's physical, it was fun, and then after eight years of making Gladiators and some of the games on there, I was, my first job on that was to pick Gladiators, and um, so I used, to go, <laughs> I used to go around gyms and find the biggest boy I could and go, hey, big boy, uh, how'd you like to wear a leotard and swing about? And then, <laughs> then I'd hang out in the ladies' gyms and go, yeah, she looks like she could do what we wanted, and again, yeah, that's what we did. Um, taught people how to play the games, designed a few games, but I was always captivated by it. I just, just loved them. I like games. Um, Total Wipeout, when I did that, I, I got a bit... I, the first part of that show is a, 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 an elimination course. 20 contestants doing that, and it's just a race from A to B. Fine. And really, that bit of the show is made in the edit, and the guys in the edit do a fantastic job, as long as we provide them with the right material, people falling on their asses burying into things, whatever, that's funny, they do that. Okay, so that's a race. Ninja Warrior, that's a race. All those things are races, and that's fine, but I'm more, I like games, because games have a personality, and games, in theory, although can be fantastically uh, physical, they have a, a life of their own and can be very funny. Very quickly, you learn, the, you learn there are some fundamentals you cannot cross. Anybody in the air either has to be on some sort of line or has to be able, able to fall into something. So on Total Wipeout, um, for instance, we were all operating about 10 foot off the ground on the big red balls, I don't know if you remember those, whatever. And you're falling into water. Water's fantastic, super safe. You can fall into that in any manner if it's deep enough. So our depth of water there is 10, 10 feet. Great. So uh, then on Gladiators, we were falling off things up at 10 feet, and we had three feet of crash mats. So, okay, uh, you've got a very good physical specimens of the people taking part. How do they fall? How do they land, more importantly? It's all about the landing. The game is irrelevant at this moment. If they can't land, they can't play. So it's like, okay, we're up in the air. You've got to be able to land in something wet or land in something super soft, like a crash mat, or even better, one of those foam bars that you fall into. That's what it is. So those are kind of some of the parameters you have to work with. And then if you're operating at height, then you know you really can't cross people's safety lines and all that other stuff, which you learn very quickly. You think, no, that's not going to work. Or you find someone to make it work, then it makes it very expensive. So that's not going to work. Okay, so I did three years of making Fear Factor, which is an American format, and then after a while, we ran out. We used all their stunts, and we started making some of our own. Um, and uh, we did a lot of that in Argentina and Buenos Aires. And I, I, there was one uh, uh, a recreation of, of speed. You know where Keanu Reeves goes under, uh, goes under a lorry? No, he goes under a bus, and he's doing that all under the bus, trying, and he's on a little go-kart. Well, we did that with a punter. And I have to say, the Argentinian guys, I, I take my hat off to them. They were, they, were, they, were, they were fine, you know. But, I mean, the next day we're up on an airplane and the guy's wing walking, you know. And it's just like, oh, right, okay. And I, do you know what? I can't actually pin one. I can tell you one of the horriblest ones I, I really enjoyed. We were all, this was all about cows, cows' eyeballs. And you had to pick the cows' eyeballs out of the fish tank with your gob. Okay, so yeah, I'm doing that all of that. <laughs> There's all sorts of things in there. So, and I, I, the director, a guy called Tim at the time, he said, right, action. And uh, the whole truck just went, 
I can't watch this. And I'm going, dude, we've got to watch this. We've got to keep score here. And no one could watch the eyeball popping or whatever it was in this tank. There's guns going everywhere and all that sort of stuff. Silly. I write the risk assessment for what we're doing. So, and I, I do that because then I'm going, I know I'm going through the process of, okay, what happens if we mess up here? What happens if we mess up here? What happens if we mess up there? Okay. Or then I phone up the health and safety guy and say, how do I couch this in a certain way that we're covered? If it's dangerous, it doesn't happen. Um, and again, anything at height, you have a top rope on and anything on the floor or anything over the fall, you have water or padding or you've, you've thought about how they're going to land, which is incredibly important. When an idea comes, I draw it with my stick men drawings, which are simple, it's stupid, you know, but everybody gets them. And it's nonsense, it's stick men doing it. And I show a man uh, with a line on him. He could be on a bicycle, on a conveyor belt, 10 metres in the air. Tour de France is what we call that on League of Their Own. Yeah, that's fine. All that's safe. Can you fly the uh, conveyor safely? Can you fly the man safely? Yes, you can. What happens when he falls? He's on a belay. We catch him stop the conveyor, the bicycle hits the ground, no one's there. So if I draw it, then I can risk assess it. It's the things that happen at speed, like the car going under the, the truck, are frightening because you've got no control. Or with wild animals. And <laughs> don't work with animals. <laughs> Any games team I'm involved with, we're going to have fun. We are going to have fun. I can't, you know, I'm not the youngest person around, and I probably won't be trying out all the games like I used to do, but we're going to have fun. We're going to work very hard. We're going to get some of it wrong. So you have to be able to put up with a bit of crap from people because you get that, and we, we deliver it and push it out. You need an imagination. You, I think you have to like sport. You have to like telly. Um, uh, you need to be extremely practical, uh, and you need to know about how things are made, how can you fly people, how can they fall, blah, blah, blah. I spend a lot of my time... I was in France with Banerjee the week before last and with a games team. And uh, they brought in their games team. We looked at it and I went through each of their games. And it's like, uh, they, they, they're super. They're you know, 20, 22 year olds to up, to up to 30 year olds. Very little games experience, but that's what they've got. You know? And I'm looking at some of the stuff and go, uh, how do I put this kindly? That's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. And, but you do it in a kind of best manner you can and it, pick on the good bits and then really go to town and talk them through that completely how it's going to work, which is, which is great. So my advice is keep working at it, because really good ideas don't come that easy.